Amen. The rich fool and the fraudulent crowd. As you know, we are involved in a very difficult struggle in our community as we stare the pain of the refusal to indict the killer of Mike Brown of Ferguson, Missouri in the face. And as I thought and reflected and spent a lot of time in prayer and meditation this week, I thought to myself, what would Jesus say? What would Jesus do? I was reminded that it was about 150 years ago that Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, the legal document to free the African American from the bondage of physical slavery. And yet, the African American man is still the most feared and the most rejected man in America who is murdered at will and for any reason that seems justifiable. I was reminded of the evidence of the Willie Lynch letter of 1712 and the oral instruction for Negroes by C.C. Jones that have continued to impact and influence the mindset of America. And almost in 2015, if you look at the headlines that we are experiencing, you would think that a few Sundays ago we didn't let our times fall back one hour, but that we let our time go back about 50 years. We must be honest with ourselves today that although there are certain, po certain pockets of those who think we have made it, there is an overwhelming proportion of us who is still struggling and fighting for the right to live. Almost 150 years later, we are still trying to prove that all men are created equal. We are still arguing over whether uh, a man can be judged by the color of his skin or the content of his character. We are hating one another for the differences of skin color and class and where we live, just as the Willie Lynch letter gave instructions. We are psychologically disillusioned about our place in this world and to be honest some of us have been sleep we thought that education or getting a house with a white picket fence was some sort of equalizer that would make us feel and be accepted in this United States of America so for some of us it was a sobering reminder that our physical possessions and our achievement and our stature of success is nothing but more than an illusion of inclusion. This morning, I want to share from, to, with you from Luke chapter 12 because there are some themes in this text that I believe speak to what Jesus would say and do in this situation. So I want to talk about the rich fool and the fraudulent crowd. And so Jesus taught in parables and here in this text he talks about a rich man and then turns to the crowd and talks to them. He challenges both the man and the crowd who were created to be change agents but were operating less than their creative capacity. In the first instance, the, the rich man who, according to the standard of living, was probably considered to be very successful in life. He had everything that he could dream of. He had stored up wealth and riches. He had a good government job. 
Uh, he was doing well according to uh, the standards of what we call the American dream. He was living the life that his parents and his ancestors could only have dreamed of. He had access to places and experiences uh, that normal uh, African Americans preceding him probably would not have had. And then God interrupts his dream by letting him know that everything that he has worked for was would not matter because his dream was dying tonight. Suddenly there was a shift in what was important and I believe that uh, many African Americans, many of us sitting in this room today find ourselves having this shift within our minds where we are realizing, where we are waking up to the fact that the American dream ain't for you. Can you just high five somebody? I know they need to hear it today. Just tell them the American dream wasn't for you baby. It was never intended for you. It wasn't designed for you and so you are pursuing something that was never created for you the sobering reminder that that uh, no matter what we've been able to accumulate and no matter how many letters we've been able to get behind our names and no matter how far outside of the beltway you live that it does not mean that you are not seen as a nigga by those who are watching your outcome in life. The message that God, that Jesus gives to this man on this day is you fool. How foolish of you to think and believe that you would be exempt from being classified as an African American. You fool. How dare you think that because you've isolated your children and given them everything that they could desire that they will be exempt to racism and criticism and discrimination. You fool. How dare you think that because you got a white picket fence that you ain't still got the KKK right down the street looking at your every move you fool 